Okay, hello everyone. My name is Patrick. Hi, my name is Dominic. And uh, today um, we have the pleasure to introduce to you some new features for Apache Streampipes um, with the title Streampipes New Kids on the Block. So this talk is going to introduce our features about edge extensions, the client API, and the data explorer. So before we start, let's um, introduce Streampipes a little bit and talk about what Streampipes really is. So um, just to give you a little brief introduction. Um, so Apache Streampipes um, is an open source industrial IoT toolbox which enables uh, non-technical users to connect, analyze, and exploit IoT data streams. And therefore, we provide a rich uh, toolbox of various different components. So for example, there is Streampipes Connect to easily connect um, new IoT data streams into the system. So for example, we're talking about um, typical IoT protocols such as ROS, OPC UA, MQTT. Um, then the core component is the pipeline editor where users can easily define and model um, analytical pipelines in a track and drop style and um, by easily connecting individual processing elements together. So we're going to see this later on um, more in detail. Um, then there's a live dashboard to quickly inspect uh, connected data. And uh, one of the features we're going to talk later, um, which is currently in beta version, is the Data Explorer. So this is for people who are not interested um, um, at uh, live data in general, but want to more exploit historical data. So we provide a way to, um, to store um, connected data sources in a um, persistent fashion. And then later on, um, go through the data, explore it, um, which we're going to show in a, in a little demo and talk about much more in detail. And lastly, there's a notifications, um, internal notifications module where you can define some um, user defined um, text components that you want to send out in case um, for any notifications. So how does it work? Um, let's go over it step by step. So in the middle, you see the uh, one of the core components, the pipeline editor with a previously modeled uh, analytical pipeline. But um, sequentially, if we start a new project, um, we first start off by connecting a new data source. So on the left, you see as one of the first uh, steps, um, we provide a rich set of adapters in order to connect to external systems or sensors via various um, uh, typical and related IoT protocols. Um, you see here OPC UA, MQTT, standard protocols such as uh, REST or newly ones such as ROS for the op uh, robot operating system. But we also see other um, related Apache projects such as PLC4X, which enable us um, or provide us a unified way in order to connect to a lot of different um, IoT data sources, such as um, PLCs, for example. Um, after having connected the data sources, um, we can switch over to the pipeline editor, um, where users um, spend, I would say, most of the time. So we provide um, a rich set of extensible and reusable data processes and things. So these are shown in the top part of the um, browser screenshot. And uh, currently we have roughly about um, 100 pipeline elements for um, different kinds of wrapper technologies. So we provide standalone microservices that can be um, later on invoked. So we're going to talk about the invocation of certain um, processing services later on. But also we provide some um, implementations for a distributed execution into um, big data frameworks such as uh, Apache Flink. So after having defined the pipeline, um, we can deploy and execute it. And this is going to be, especially the deployment part, is going to be something we're going to talk about uh, later on in more detail and compare it to the new edge extensions. And uh, currently, we provide various ways in order to install and host and deploy stream pipes. So um, since we use uh, Docker 
um, as our way to orchestrate all the in individual services. We kind of abstract it from the underlying infrastructure so we can deploy and run on x86 architectures as well as on ARM-based systems, um, but also um, on, on Linux, on Mac or Windows. And we also provide um, a Helm chart to deploy stream pipes into Kubernetes. And lastly, um, what's the purpose of doing all this? It's because we want to realize certain use cases. And uh, for that, um, I'd like to switch over to the next slide to talk about them a little bit more in detail. So what we experience from the community and um, from our daily work with the tool, so typical use cases can be uh, classified into these four categories right now. So at first, um, there's a use case which is about continuous asset monitoring. So here, um, a user can easily connect to an asset in a, um, on, the, on the shop floor, like certain machinery or something like this, and uh, can simply use the pipeline editor in order to create uh, dashboards, in order to create live visualizations about the data. To, to quickly gain insights of the current state of that asset that is, that is being monitored. Um, in addition to that, um, we can also, because uh, the pipeline elements and data processes are extendable, provide a software development kit for them, um, easily extend um, this toolbox by defining new processing elements in order to customize the system, for example, to define certain KPI analytics processes that uh, derive live KPIs from that previously connected data sources um, that are, for example, relevant for production or for other domains. Um, let's shift over to the other two remaining use cases that are more focused on newly arising um, and, and valid technologies and domains, which is all about um, machine learning. So for instance, with stream pipes, it's really easy to quickly collect a huge set of training data um, and pre-process the data right away um, in order to build up a so-called training data repository as a first step before actually going into the, um, yeah, the data processing and machine learning pipeline. And once we have the data trained um, or a model trained on, on the data, we can easily on the one hand use a pre-trained model and integrate it back into um, a processing element within Streampipe. So we had a talk yesterday about that of our colleagues and so need to check that video out. Um, and besides using data-driven um, machine learning models as a decision-making uh, element, we can also use more traditional rule-based systems based on uh, complex event processing in order to detect uh, time-critical situations or use that for product quality inspection if you're using, for example, um, image data. So what is our vision? It's actually to become a very easy to use all-in-one toolbox for the management of IIoT data and also to support non-technical users in analyzing live data from industrial machinery. Um, so what is our roadmap now? Um, so we started in the Apache Incubator like um, one and a half years ago. Um, and our goal now is to have a stable release. Um, so a 1.0 version by the end of this year. And to do that, we are now currently extending some capabilities for analyzing industrial data streams. And we will present some important building blocks of, um, of that within this presentation that are to come in this year or have just been released um, um, in this year. And um, besides um, more functionality, we also try to um, bring more production um, mission critical um, things to screen dots like user management, um, security, and also resilience of the system. So um, we've just added some health management of pipelines so that pipelines automatically recover in case there are failures, um, but also to provide more advanced user management. So some of these features are now part of um, this presentation. So first of all, Patrick will talk about um, StreamApps Edge extensions, which is a new feature in StreamApps that allows you to um, deploy pipelines um, to edge nodes. So currently pipelines can run on, on in a distributed fashion on several hosts. 
um, but with this new architectural um, extension, you can select where to run a specific data processor from a pipeline. So that's a very cool feature that Patrick will present in a minute. And then there are two more features we would like to highlight in, in this talk. The first is um, the client API, which allows users to interact with screen pipes and concepts for screen pipes from external applications. Um, so that should contribute to the overall um, developer experience. And finally, we will um, present the Data Explorer, which is a tool for visually inspecting historical data that has been stored by StreamPath from uh, real-time data sources um, and um, that will be also released um, this year. Um, so now let me get back to Patrick, um, who will start um, with the first part um, on StreamPath Edge extension. All right, let me just get my screen sharing back. All right. So the first part of the new kits for Streampipes is going to be the edge extensions. And I would like to start with a deeper look on how the architecture today looks like of Streampipes. So basically from the top uh, to the bottom, we start with a UI, which you previously um, have been seen or have been presented by Dominic. Um, then most of the magic is happening in the back, uh, back end of stream pipes currently, which is mostly focused on pipeline management. So here we have a matching module, for example, where um, elements are uh, basically assessed while or life assessed while um, connecting them together um, during the pipeline authoring process. Then we got the monitoring module that Dominic just briefly talked about. And then, of course, there's um, an execution module that sends out the individual invocation requests that contain the user configurations for the individual pipeline elements that are to be started on um, the pipeline element microservices that have been registered previously. And on the other side, we do have um, several storage options or use several storage options um, to store and query individual, um, for example, pipeline descriptions. And um, we use, for example, Influx um, to store historical data currently. But um, right now, um, when we go to the bottom part of the figure, we see that adapters and processors and things, so all the pipeline elements are communicating with the transport layer. Um, so it's commonly uh, currently Kafka in a pub sub uh, fashion. And when we look at current limitations, when we would bring this architecture to the edge, um, there are some limitations with the design of the pipeline and their deployment and the, uh, um, the messaging itself. So currently um, the pipeline de deployment is rather rigid and limited because users don't have any options where to deploy individual um, processing. Um, so there's no way how to say, okay, I wanna run that uh, process on that node and the other one on another node. Um, second point is that we currently only use like a one fits it all transport layer at a central location, which is fine if we talk about cloud uh, deployments and in cloud infrastructures where um, we can use that scalability of currently available message systems. But um, for a geo-distributed deployment, it's not feasible to have this excessive round-trip communication between individual pipeline elements. And lastly, um, it's a point that hits us all when we talk about edge computing as the heterogeneity aspects of different compute resources and um, architectures of the different um, infrastructure nodes. So the idea is to have a geo-distributed pipeline management approach that still abstracts um, the users um, from the technical details. And we envision a master agent-like design with a central coordinator um, integrated within the backend and locally running um, node controller instances that manage pipeline elements and all the other parts that are um, necessary in order for the deployment and for um, um, a resilient and fault tolerant uh, management of the processes um, locally. And um, for the messaging, we envision that locally 
um, deploy pipeline elements, use local event exchange. So they use intranode communication. Um, whereas we want to relay certain event streams for internode communication if required. So for example, if there's one subset of pipeline elements deployed on the edge, the other one deployed in the cloud, we relay these um, output event streams to the corresponding cloud node. Um, and therefore, we want to provide lightweight um, messaging on the edge and use scalable transport layer on cloud. And still, which is one of the most um, interesting or most valuable features, is that we want to give the users the options to flexibly deploy individual uh, pipeline elements using, um, yeah, basically selection or other strategies. So if we look at the architecture extension from a higher level, we see the um, master agent pattern where we extend the backend to the node management part that centrally oversees all the nodes that have been registered. So a node in that case, um, or an agent is represented by a node controller instance um, that has several functionalities. For example, it manages the event stream relays, it manages the pipeline element lifecycle within the pipeline element manager, it manages local container deployment and collects resources that are sent and synchronized to the um, central node management in order to assess the current status of a node. Um, how does it look like from the um, setup phase? So Basically, what we prerequisite is Docker and Docker Compose and a running Streampipes instance in the, um, in the cloud. And um, we only need um, a step, like a four step um, process in order to get a node up and running. So, therefore, we first need to generate an API token from within the Streampipes UI. This one we can integrate into. Um, the Docker Compose description we see on the right hand side and in, in configure it via environment variable. Um, then, upon starting this container, it self registers with the backend. And uh, after having registered with the backend, it auto deploys um, the suitable Streampipes extensions containers and the relevant uh, other management containers, such as the broker. And after that, it's ready to use. So um, if we go through a deployment walkthrough, it looks like this. The pipeline management receives uh, the pipeline description, um, then fetches all online um, and healthy nodes that are currently available, and then sends out the invocation requests for the event stream relays if they are necessary. So here, for example, the node controller um, already establishes a subscription to a pipeline element P2 and uh, forwards that to the cloud uh, transport layer via a publishing um, command. Then after step four, we send out the invocation request for the individual pipeline element services um, that are basically only relayed or proxied by the individual node controller instances that are um, to be hosting a pipeline element. So here, finally, um, after the pipeline elements are instantiated within the pipeline um, element microservices, we see um, that we store the description of the pipeline and all the relays uh, at a central location. And um, we see that we then connect to the IFT sensors via the adapter A1 and um, forward that request or that uh, that messages and events all the way to S4, where we, for example, store the um, data into InfluxDB for um, yeah to persist it. Okay, so currently this is only a protocol a prototypical implementation. It's um, implemented against um, Streampipes version um, zero eighty six zero snapshot, um, which is not the newest one. And it's uh, currently under the branch edge extensions. And there's still some things to do in order to um, yeah, further align it with the current branch, which we plan to integrate um, later this year. But uh, there's still work to do with regards to fault tolerance and resiliency mechanisms 
So in order to recover from failures such as node failures, where we need to restart um, the processing or redeploy onto other nodes, if nodes are not available anymore and they get lost um, and we need to handle intermittent uh, network outages. Um, so for example, we need to implement more advanced um, relay policies so currently we buffer um, the events that could not be forwarded to the cloud transport layer um, up until a certain point, but we can also um, employ more um, advanced strategies that would allow to, for example, spill over events to disks and resync later if, um, if feasible for that given use case. So, but still I want to give you a little um, glimpse on how it looks like uh, today. So for that, I'd like to switch over to the browser and uh, hopefully you can see a node overview of um, the, of two running and connected nodes here. We got two Raspberry Pis as edge nodes um, where we can see um, the status of, the, of that node where I can see some labels that were attached to, to them. So for example, Edge and Raspberry Pi and the unique label machine A and machine uh, B and some uh, resource information. And um, if we switch back over to the pipeline overview, if we go back to the um, saving options, we see that we here have a new um, toggle that says advanced deployment options where it basically splits up into two categories, which are operation policies that are uh, global policies. So that are assigned for the whole pipeline. So for example, we could define preemption um, for individual pipelines that are more relevant and give them a corresponding score here, for example, or class from low to high. Um, then we got event relay options as already said. So it's gonna be purge if we don't really need that data in case of a network outage or if we wanna buffer it for certain events. And we do have deployment options. And more specifically, there's a custom option where you can see that you um, are provided with um, given um, labels or no tags that you can use for filtering given targets and um, you can assign an individual deployment target for um, the respective pipeline element. And with that, um, you can, from the UI, deploy that pipeline and invoke different services, invoke the relays, and um, yeah, uh, hence deploy um, pipelines geo distributedly. Yes. So let's switch back to see if we will receive some MQTT messages. Yeah, we do. And I'm not gonna show you the dashboard because that's what Dominic showed you earlier. And um, so this way we can easily define um, pipelines and um, deploy them on geo-distributed nodes, for example, on a machine close um, or on, on a Raspberry Pi close to a machine on the edge. All right. That I'd like to hand over to Dominic. Okay, so um, let me share my screen again, go back to the presentation mode. I hope you can see now the presentation. And um, let me start um, with the next concept and quickly show you how the client API works. So within Streamers, we have a lot of concepts that are now managed internally so such as connected data streams um, we also have stream metadata so that we know in, in what um, type data is being produced but also know the semantic type like if it's a temperature value or some um, some other value in the measurement unit some things um, we have concepts of configured pipelines um, that are available and also historical data now um, that is being persisted in, in stream bed. so all these concepts are currently internally managed and um, um, these are not exposed to the outside. So it's, it's, it's available internally, but now we have many users who ask, can we um, uh, com communicate with Streambus from our third party application, like um, accessing resources from Streambus from other applications. Um, so what are some examples for that? Um, 
some users would like to trigger the pipeline life cycle from external applications. Like you would like to start a pipeline or stop a specific pipeline if a specific situation occurs, um, if there's some context change, you would like to change the behavior of pipelines. Um, of course, you also would like to maybe to modify pipelines. So thresholds should be, in, should be adapted based on certain conditions. Um, and also once you have con consumed or connected data sources in stream pipes, maybe you would like to have a way to consume live data based on connected streams um, directly from another application. Um, and finally, maybe also some users would like to consume historical data that has been persisted by streamers from running pipelines. So um, just to give you a quick uh, overview of our client API architecture, on the right-hand side, you can see um, the Apache StreamUps core, um, which is um, like um, yeah, the, um, the core of, of, of StreamPaths. And now there's a new module called Platform Services, which exposes some functionality of StreamUps to um, other applications. And currently we have two clients. Um, the first one is the REST API client, so you can use the, um, this REST API to, um, to get information on pipelines and streams and so on um, over this endpoint. Um, and there's also a Java client, which I will show you in a second. Um, so how does it work? Um, so that's basically the code overview and I will um, show this live in a few um, seconds. Um, so, but basically you need to provide some credentials um, then the system will establish a connection to stream apps. And then you have some um, high level methods to communicate with stream apps, like getting all pipelines, um, starting pipelines, or getting live data for data streams. Um, so what are currently supported features? So um, um, everything I will now show is part of the current release, so it's available to the public. And there you can start, stop, and delete pipelines. You can subscribe to data streams. And you can also subscribe to the input and output of data processes and things, which is quite cool because you can get intermediate results from pipelines and directly to another application. Um, upcoming will be an, a new feature to also define pipelines from code um, so that you don't need to graphically model your pipeline, but you can also um, provide the code snippet and run it in a streamers pipeline um, and also to receive historical data, something which will be part of the next release. So let me quickly show you a demonstration. Um, so first of all, I will create a simple project. So here I've already imported um, the dependency. So you need a single dependency to Streamers client. And now I will move to um, a simple class where I can provide um, Streamers credentials at first. So there is um, credentials, credentials. And here you need to provide your username. Um, and an API key. So um, where do you get um, your API key? Um, there's a new um, feature in the stream of um, UI um, where you can now go to this profile and create a new API key um, like Chikran. So let's create this key and copy that. And that's the key now you can um, provide um, to this credentials helper. And now you can create a new client instance um, um, by um, creating um, this and referring to your host. So currently, it's um, I have a streamers instance running You need to provide the port, your credentials, and in that case, I will um, disable HTTPS um, as it's only running on HTTP. And now, what you can do with this client object, for instance, you can get a list of pipelines. And you can do that by requesting the pipelines, and you would like to get all pipelines. So let's maybe um, start um, with this example um, and just print the number of pipelines. Um, or let's 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 check um, maybe for each. Um, let's bring the name of each pipeline, and now let's um, execute that um, and see um, if we get a proper connection. So now you can see the code executing. 
and it's trying to connect. And now you can see the three pipelines here. Um, and if I go back to my instance, you can see these pipelines which are currently all running. So what you can also do is like um, to start or stop a pipeline. So in, in that case, um, let's just um, um, uh, stop a specific pipeline like um, the first pipelines. So, and, and that's how you can interact um, with the client API. So, if I run this again, um, you can now stop a specific pipeline. And um, if I now move back to the stream pipes, um, you can see that um, this pipeline has been stopped. Um, all right, so you can do a lot more. Like you can also um, subscribe to to data streams. So if you would like to get live data, for instance, you can also um, um, connect to data streams. So if you can get a specific stream ID, you can also get all streams um, and and print these. But you can do a lot more, like also um, subscribing to to data processors, which I can show now due to time constraints. But um, you can just play around with it so it's all documented so you can see um, what happens in the client API and that should give you a very quick demonstration too. Um, so let me switch back to um, um, the slides. So I hope you can see now the next slide. So finally, I would like to show you the Data Explorer, which is a tool for visually inspecting historical data. So um, besides live data, which you've seen in the dashboard, now we would like to um, also support or provide a way to visually explore historical data. Um, well, um, first of all, um, we do that in order to also allow users to compare data from different data streams so that you can inspect what is currently produced, what are measurements from specific sensors and also to provide a basis for um, labeling time series data um, for machine learning tasks, which has already been shown also by, by the talk from Philip and Marco yesterday. Um, so this data explorer is now targeted at non-technical users, so we do not want to replicate functionality of powerful BI tools such as Superset, but just to provide a way for users to easily um, explore um, uh, data streams that has be, have been uh, persisted. So, um, one quick demonstration of, of that as well. Um, so um, the data explorer is here. So um, that's the main view. I've already created a simple data view. Um, usually you create a data view by um, using this data lake sync, which is provided over here. So you need to connect it. You can connect it to any data stream and then it's being persisted and managed by streamers itself. And then you will find it um, in the data view section here. So. If I now switch to the data view section, you can see um, um, live data or historical data from um, the sensors that have produced like flow values. So you can easily see that and you can now also inspect um, if everything is working or you see any outliers in your data. So it's just a way to, to better um, understand what kind of data is currently being produced. And you can also easily um, switch to other values um, or you can aggregate values um, and so there are a lot of features um, which are currently being developed. So that's a feature which is already available in StreamPass, but we are now currently working on improving this, adding more visualizations and so on. Um, so that should just give you a quick overview um, and I will um, switch back to my slides. Um, so what is on our roadmap for the data explorer? Um, we are currently working on adding more visualizations types. Um, um, we will be using Apache eCharts for that, which is a great tool with a a large number of visualizations um, that can um, extend the feature set of our data explorer as well. Um, we are working on improving performance for queries that depend on a lot of data being loaded um, by, um, by stream pipes. And we also plan to expose this REST API to the streamers client. So all that is being planned for the release, um, which is um, coming after the current release uh, 0 0.69 probably in August or September, um, just to give you a rough time frame. Now to summarize, um, we would like to um, welcome you to our community, invite you to become part of our community. Um, <coughs> Apache Streamers is a, a, 
a cool group of people who would like to develop a very cool IIoT toolbox. Um, and if you want to get involved, there are several ways. Um, we have um, a large set of different um, things where you can help and support, um, like contributing to UI features, to the core, to extensions, writing new processors or things um, for third party systems. Um, also non-code contributions are very welcome. So here you can find some links, um, get in touch with us. We are happy to help and um, we hope that we will see you on our mailing list. Um, and that will be the end of our talk. So I hope you have enjoyed it. And um, we all hope to see you in person one day. Um, and until then, um, have a good day. Um, and we um, can now answer your questions as well. Thanks. Thank you.